Lesson 4-3, Solving Linear Quadratic uh, Systems. Essential question, how can you solve a system composed of a linear equation in two variables and a quadratic equation in two variables? One, graphing, <clears throat> using a calculator and such. Two, uh, solve the linear equation for a variable. Okay, so solve for a variable, variable, and substitute, and substitute substitute in the quadratic equation for the other variable, and substitute in for the other variable. All right. So that's how we're going to do it. Investigating intersections of lines and graphs of quadratic equations. There are many real world situations that can be modeled by linear or quadratic functions. What happens when the situate when the two situations overlap? Examine graphs of linear functions and quadratic functions and determine the ways they can intersect. So A here, examine the two graphs below to consider the ways a line could intersect a parabola. B, and I'll let you answer those to yourself. B, and that's actually the, the answer to A, sketch three graphs of a line and a parabola, one showing intersection in one point, one showing intersection in two points, and one not showing intersection, uh, one not showing intersection. So let's try that. So uh, we'll just, uh, we'll try to get, let's see here. I'm trying to mimic that other graph. That's close. And then let's see here. Let's see. Here's the parabola. And all right, so uh, let's see. One showing intersection in one point. So let's let's do that. There we go. There's a straight line. All right, there's one point. One showing intersection in two points, and we'll just pick this right here, and then one showing uh, and one not showing intersection. So we'll just pick a point down here. All right. So that that's what could happen with a line and a parabola. You could have one point of intersection, two points of intersection, or no intersection. So a constant linear function and a quadratic uh, function can set, can enter can intersect at zero, one, or two points. If a line intersects a circle at one at one point, what is the relationship between the line and the radius of the circle? Uh, let's just let's just draw draw one real quick so we can illustrate it. And I'll, I'm gonna. Uh, just draw right down here and let's see here we've got we've got this right here and we got that right there there's our coordinate plane and let's just draw us a circle real quick and in a hurry like uh, and then uh, we'll just pick a point right here and just and there it is all right good 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 and let's draw a line. Let's see. If a line intersects a circle, what is the relationship? So let's just let's just draw some line here. Let's just draw some line. And we'll pick us up. We'll go out here like this. And, and there it goes. It crosses at one point. Okay. And then we'll say the center's right about right there. So what is the relationship between the line and the radius of the circle? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. And there it is. 
There's the radius in the circle. What does that look like that does? What, what does that look like that does? Does that help? It forms a right angle. So the line, the line and the radius and the radius are perpendicular. All right, good. Does a line have to be horizontal to intersect a parabola at one point? No. For example, a line could be tangent to a parabola at any point along the curve. So let's try that. Let's, let's just do that real quick. And what if we, uh, here, here's our uh, coordinate plane. And then I'll just draw some, uh, that's, that's not very straight, is it? That's not very straight. That's not very straight. I, mean, I can draw straight a straight line. Well, it was straight, but it wasn't level. Let's see if I can't draw a level line. Does that look level? That looks level. Kind of. Yeah. All right. Let me draw a parabola. Let's just, I'll just draw a regular old parabola right here. Okay. Uh, so does a line have to be horizontal to intersect a parabola at one point? And, and I would say no. What about uh, this line here? What about this line here? What if, is that only intersected at one point? Ah, that one doesn't intersect at all. Ah. Let me fix that back up. All right, and then I'll draw me. A, let's try something from this side over here. Does that intersect it at one point? It does, doesn't it? So, no, a line does not have to. Uh, no. A line, uh, a line can be tangent to the parabola at any point along the curve. So, no, it does not have to be horizontal. Uh, it, it can, it can be tangent. Tangent. To a parabola at at any point along the curve. Yeah. All right. Good. So solving linear quadratic systems graphically. Graph each equation by hand and find the set of points where the two graphs intersect. So I'll let you do one and when you get or A and when you get back we'll do B together. Okay. <clears throat> so we have 3x plus y equals 4.5 and y equals 1 half times x minus 3 squared. Okay. So solve it says solve each equation for y. Well we uh, let's see what do we do here. All right, so we have 3x plus y. So let's subtract 3x from both sides. And plus 4.5. And this one here is already solved. So we got 1 half times x minus 3 squared. Okay. Uh, now we can plot those lines. And let's see here. Uh, Let's see, 4 point, let's see, that's 6, that's 5, that's 4.5, and negative 3, uh, negative 3, let's see, 4, so it's going to be negative, that's negative, oh, that's 4.5, minus 3 would be 1.5, that's maybe right here, and then 1, and there we go, so we got our two lines, and let's see here. It goes down. And so that's this one here. That's that one there. Now, what about the, uh, what about the, well, let's see. It's going to hit here at three. 
Okay, and then uh, let's see here. About right there. And then and then this in here is gonna go down like that. Uh, I think I may be on the wrong side there. I look like this. And then I'm trying I'm trying let's let's uh let's plot those in the calculator real quick and I'll show you. All right. Uh find the approximate point of intersection. It looks to be zero and four point five. All right. Note that checking these coordinates in the original system show that this is an exact solution. Well, well, let's try the calculator. So let's graph it. What do we got? Uh, menu, 3, 2, and our first one is 3x plus y. 3x plus y equals 4.5. 4.5. Enter and there it is, and we'll just press tab here, and we'll put the other one in. Y equals, and then we've got one control divide two and times open parentheses x minus three x minus three close parentheses squared, and press enter, and there we go. Now it's kind of hard to see here, so listen. Spread this out a little bit so we can see what we got. All right, we got to find that point of intersection there. So menu, six, four. And then we'll go right here and right there. And there it is, zero, 4.5. All right, not too bad. So we checked it. This is your turn. Solve the given linear quadratic system graphically. Okay. Now. We can do it here on this, uh, and you can, uh, let's see here, uh, if you, let's see that one, let's see this first one here would be that blue, uh, that would be y equals negative 3x, so we got a point here at 0, and then 1, 2, 3, and 1 is right there, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 2 is right there, and we got a couple. Let me get blue here, and then like that. That looks pretty good. And then this one here, let's add 6 to both sides, and we got y equals negative 3x squared plus 6. So we know that's going to be here, and then uh, that's going to go down, and it's going to go... Uh, can go like this. And I need to be doing that in a different color. Let's do that in a different color so we can see it. All right. And then, of course, uh, and then that looks like that. Now, it's kind of hard to pick exactly where that is like that because, uh, you know, we're not super precise. Uh, but what we can do is we can go to the calculator. New document. No. Graph. And we can type them in there. Uh, menu. Three, two. And you got Y plus 3X equals zero. Enter. Press tab, and you got y minus 6 equals negative 3x squared. Press enter. Aha! There we go. And they have that program Desmos, too, online that you can get if you don't have a, a calculator like this. Menu, uh, 6, 4. And so we got negative one three menu six uh, four and two negative six so there's our solutions let's go back to our solutions are 
negative 1, 3, and 2, negative 6. Number 4, number 4. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it in the calculator. Like I said, you can go to and get Desmos uh, and download it on your thing. You can get it through Google, and uh, you can uh, do this at home. No. Graphs. Ah, that was wrong one. New document. No. Graphs. All right. Menu. Three, two. And you got y plus 1, y plus 1 equals, and then uh, you got 1, uh, control, divide 2, uh, get it times, open parentheses, x minus 3, x minus 3, close parentheses squared, press enter, and then you got x minus y equals 6 and oh I didn't press tab x minus y equals 6 now it's in there press enter and then you can see no solution no solution no solution all right now it's about to get fun solving Linear quadratic systems algebraically. Use algebra to find the solution. Use substitution or elimination. I'll let you go through A, and when you get back, we'll do B together. So you have B, Y equals 1 fourth times X minus 3 squared, and 3X minus 2Y equals 13. Solve, solve the system by substitution. The first equation is already solved for y. Substitute the expression 1 fourth times x minus 3 squared for y in the second solution. Now solve for x. So what it does first is it distributes that 2 inside, inside there. So you have uh, 2 times one fourth that would be one half okay and then it does the x minus three squared you got x minus three squared uh, uh, that equals x minus three times x minus three which is x squared minus three x minus three x plus nine so you get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now it distributes the negative 1 half in there, so you get negative 1 half x plus 3 minus 9 halves. Okay, can we combine some like terms? Uh, so you got 13 equals, and then 3x and 3x there, that's going to make that plus 6x minus 9 halves. We're going to add 13 to both sides, plus 13, plus 13. Now, 13 is uh, 26 halves, so uh, that's going to give you uh, nine, minus 9 halves, we have plus 13, minus, uh, well, 13, that would be 26 halves. Uh, it's going to be uh, 17 halves. So, and then uh, negative 1 half plus 6x. I don't know how they get 35 halves because that's minus. And if this was positive, you're sub Oh, subtract. Subtract. Silly me. All right. Uh, so that's minus. Minus 26 halves. Ooh, rough morning, I guess. So that does give us 35 halves. And then it looks like they go ahead and, and uh, multiply uh, everything here by 2 times 2. So that gets uh, maybe by negative 2. Negative 2. And that gives you x squared. x squared minus 12x. And that's going to be plus 35. Okay. 
Now, what are the factors of 35 that when added give you negative 12? So that's going to be minus 5 and minus 7. Minus 5 and minus 7. So x equals uh, x equals x minus 5. x is going to equal 5 or x is going to equal 7. Good deal. So the line and the parabola intersect at two points. Use the x-coordinates of the intersection to find the points. So solve 3x minus 2y equals 13 for y. Okay. Uh, so 3x minus 2y equals 13. We're subtracting 3x from both sides. It looks like we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. And we're going to get negative, and that's going to be 13, minus 3x, minus 3x, divided by 2. Okay. So now we're going to put the 5 in. 3 times 5 is 15. So 13 minus 15 is negative 2. Negative, negative 2 is just positive 1. And here we're going to put the 7 in. 3 times 7 is 21. 13 minus 21 is uh, negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative. Negative 8 divided by 2 is 4. All right. So the solutions are going to be 5, 1, and 7, 4. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try that in our count. Let's go back up here real quick, and let's try these two equations. All right. So on new document, no, graphs, and we have menu. Let's see, menu, 3, 2, and we have uh, 3. Yeah, I guess the 2 didn't hit. All right. Y equals, Y equals, one four one control divide four times and that's going to be x minus three squared x minus three squared press enter that right, that looks good and then we'll press tab and we have three x minus two y three x minus two y equals uh, 13 and we press enter and there it is wow that looks like just one there huh maybe we made a mistake oh look look at there yeah when you click all right so let's try that menu six four out five one there we go menu six four and then get on the other side of it a little bit and then Seven four five one and seven four five one and seven four is that what we got? Yeah, five one and seven four. Good deal. <clears throat> How can you check algebraic solutions for reasonableness? Well, you can graph the system and compare the algebraic solutions to the approximate solutions from the graph. So you can graph them. Graph. Graph, uh, graph them and compare uh, the approximate solutions for reasonableness. Okay, now if you're using a calculator like the uh, Inspire, you're going to get the exact solution. Uh, all right. Your turn. Solve the linear quadratic equation graphically or algebraically. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you how to do this, but you are more than welcome to do it in the calculator. All right, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I got y equals 
negative 2x, negative 2x plus 6. Okay. Now, do we have to do that? No. What else can we do? You could, you could solve for x as well. Let's try that. Let's just solve for x. Uh, add 6 to both sides. So you got x equals, and that's going to be uh, negative 1, 6, y squared plus 6. Now we can go over here, and we can take, uh, we can use the second equation here, and you got 2 times what we got in the first one, negative 1, 6, y squared, negative 1, 6, y, plus 6, plus y equals 6, and that's going to give you negative 1 third y squared plus 12 plus y equals 6. So I'm going to move that 6 over there and rearrange them. I got negative 1 third y squared uh, plus y, and then that's going to be plus 6. Now I'm going to get rid of that negative 1 third. I'm going to multiply that one. Equals zero. I'm going to multiply that by negative 3. So that gives me y squared minus 3y minus 18 equals 0. Okay, now, now that I've got that, what are the factors? What are the factors of negative 18 that give you? How about y plus 3 times y minus 6? Does that work? Let's see. 3 times, that's negative 18. Yeah, that works. So y equals negative 3, y equals 6. Now that I know what y is, I can go back up here, and I got, I got x minus 6 equals 1, 6 times, uh, times negative 3 squared. And I just put that in there. Maybe I'll put that in red, so you know where I got it from negative 3. So what do we got here? We got x minus 6 equals, and that's going to, that's going to make that 9. Uh, so I got 1, 6 times 9, negative 1, 6 times 9. So x minus 6 equals, and then I'm getting uh, negative 3 halves. Okay. Add 6 to both sides, plus 6 plus 6, and I get x equals, uh, well, 6, wouldn't that be the same as 12 halves? 12 halves, so it's going to give me 9 halves, so x equals 9 halves. All right, so one of my solutions, one of my solutions here is going to be uh, 9 halves, and negative 3, and let's find the other solution. I've got x minus 6 equals negative 1 over 6, and I'm going to put that 6 in there. 6 in there. Okay, so what do we got? We've got x minus 6 equals, and that's going to be 1, 6, negative 1, 6 times 36. Well, it's going to give you x minus 6 equals, uh, well, that, 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 let's see, minus 6, minus 6, and let's see, 36 times 1, that's like negative 6, isn't it? Negative 6, is that right? Okay, good. So now let's add 6, and we got x equals 0. Okay, x equals 0. So now our solution, this solution here, and... And uh, we're going to have uh, 0 and 6. Uh, so our solutions are 0, 6, and 9 halves, negative 3. <coughs> All right. What about 7? What about 7? Let's try 7. Oh, this is it's not bad at all. So let's see here. Uh, what what if 
what if, uh, let's see here, let's rewrite that. We'll add, uh, let's see, uh, minus y minus y equals negative x plus 7. And then uh, divide everything by negative 1, and we got y equals x minus 7. Okay, x minus 7. Now we can take this, take this, and we'll take the other equation, and we've got x squared minus equals 7. And then we've got x minus 7. x minus 7. Okay? So now uh, let's distribute that negative in there. And we have x squared minus x plus 7 equals 7. Subtract 7 from both sides, and we got x squared minus x equals 0. Well, I can factor out an x out of there, and I got x times x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. Good, good. Now we can go back up in this original equation here, and we'll just we'll take this one right here, and we've got x minus y equals 7, and x minus y equals 7, and we got, uh, well, uh, let's put 0 in there. 0 minus y equals 7, so negative y equals 7, so y equals negative 7. So that gives us that gives us a solution of uh, what do we got? We've got uh, x is zero, and we got y is negative seven. Let's try the other. One. We're gonna put a, a one in there for the x minus y equals seven. Subtract one from both sides, and negative y equals six. So y equals negative six. And that's going to give us, that's going to get, well, we're going to put a 1 in for the x, and we're going to put a negative 6 in for the y. So there's our two solutions. All right? Cool. You can use the techniques from previous examples to solve real-world problems. Uh, I'll let you read through A, and when you get back, uh, we'll do be together. B. The range of a signal from a radio station is bounded by a circle described by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 2025. A stretch of highway near the station is modeled by the equation y minus 15 equals 1 over 20 x. At which points if any, does the car on the highway enter and exit the broadcast range of the station? So we've got these two equations. Let's try the old calculator. On new document, no. Graph. All right, what was our first one? X squared plus Y squared equals 2025. X squared plus y squared equals 20, 25. Wow, I don't see anything to you. All right, what's the set? y minus 15. So y minus 15. y minus 15 equals 1 control divide 20. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I did not. Let's see, menu three, two. So what do we got? Y minus, I didn't forget what it was now. Y minus 15, Y minus 15 equals one control divide 20 X. And there that is. Uh-oh. Let's press tab. And we had x squared plus y squared equals 20, 25. 
That must be the center of the circle. Okay, let's see. Tab. Let's check and see if we got our equation in there. We got that one in there. We got that one in there. Any other equation? Nope, that's it. All right, good. So what we need to do is menu four and let's zoom. And then we'll click there and click there. Click again. We got to. Oh, I'm going in. I need to go out. Menu. Four, four, out. There we go. And now, oh, look at there. There it is. All right. All right. So I got, <coughs> I got it on there. So let's hit escape. And then we're going to menu six, four. And it says first corner. I'm on the top left that and then drag it over there. And so we're going to get a negative 43.1 and 12.8. And then menu six four and notice how this is different okay and we got 41.6 and 17.1 all right so it can be done in the calculator let's see it says solve for the second equation for y or solve the second equation for y let's do that we're going to do it algebraically we, that's just the way we roll all right, we have y minus 15, y minus 15 equals 1 over 20x. So why don't we add 15 to both sides and get 1 over 20x plus 15. All right, now we want to substitute for x in the first equation. So we've got that, and let's see here. I need... Uh, I need to make this just a tad smaller. So what do we got here? We're at 163%. Let's try 150%. And yeah, now we got it all. We got it all there now. Solve for x in the first equation. So we got x squared plus y squared. But we found out that y, uh, y we solved for y on that other one. We got 1 over 20x plus 15 squared. So if we factor, or if we multiply, that's 1 over 20x plus 15 times 1 over 20x plus 15, okay? That's going to equal 1 over 400x squared plus 3 halves x plus 225 okay all right so we got this x squared and that right there so that well, would be like 400 over 400 x squared plus 1 over 400 x squared that's going to give us 401 Ah, 401 over 400 x squared. Plus, hmm. And then let's subtract 2025 from us. It's going to give us negative 1800. Okay. Now, that's going to be hard to do. So let's multiply, let's multiply uh, everything by 400. Uh, well, maybe we, let's do that down here. Let's do that down here. Let's multiply everything by 400, okay? And then that's going to give us 401x squared plus 600x minus 720,000, okay? And we'll solve using the quadratic formula. We'll plug all that in, and we'll get x is approximately negative 41.63 or... 43.13 and that's just round now that you know that looks that sounds familiar that's negative 41 well that's 41.6 and huh
Isn't that what we got right here? Well, we got it backwards. We got negative 41, 43.1 and 41.6. So maybe I got my signs backwards here. 41 and negative 43.13. Now, to find the y values, to, to find the y values, uh, to find the y values, we just substitute in x value. So you got y equals 1 over 20 times 41.63 plus 15. And you just put it in your calculator and you get y equals 129.2. And uh, over here you got y equals 1 over 20 times uh, 43.13 plus 15. And uh, let's just plug that in the old calculator. Let's make sure. Let's get our thing here. And we got <clears throat> 1, control, divide, 20, times, times 41.63, and then plus 15, plus 15. And that gives you 17. 17.085 and then let's go up there and grab that and then uh, that's negative 43 that's positive 41 and 17.1 is that what 41.3 41.6 and 17.1, 17.1, okay, and, and let's see here, 41.63 plus 50, it gives 17.1, right, that's what we got here, 17.1, 41.6, and then now we want to put in negative, negative uh, 40, 43.13 and it's 12.84 12.84 well let's check our calculator here. what do we get we got 12.8 right there for negative 43.1 all right so uh let's just go back 12 point so y equals 12.84 so our solutions are and that was supposed to have been Negative, wasn't it? Yeah, that's negative. So we got uh, 41.63, 17.1, and 17 we have negative 43.13 and 12.84. Negative 40 and 12.8, 41. There we go. Good deal. Your turn. An asteroid is traveling towards Earth on a path that can be modeled by the equation y equals 1 over 28x minus 7. It approaches a satellite in orbit on a path that can be modeled by the equation x squared over 49 plus y squared over 51 equals 1. What are the approximate coordinates of the points where the satellite and asteroid might collide. Okay, well, boy, this looks like a dandy. I'm thinking this is a dandy for the old calculator. What do you think? Uh, this would be a dandy. This time, menu three, two, and we got y equals y equals one control divide 28 times x. So we got x x minus 7 enter aha all right press tap and this next one's going to be kind of funky control divide and we've got x squared over 49 x squared over 49 and plus plus and then control divide and we got y squared over 
the tiburon. And that equals one. Press enter. X squared plus Y squared. Ah, uh, well, where's the other one at? Let's see, menu, four, four. Aha, uh -huh. so it just kind of touches down there on the bottom, doesn't it? It, uh, it just kind of touches. Them. Let's see here, menu, six, four. And we'll grab a spot here and a spot there. Aha, uh -huh. we got that one there. Uh, let's try see if we got another menu six four and we do okay so what are our solutions negative 1.17 negative 7.04 and 1.65 and negative 6.94 so let's see here now see that wasn't so hard now was it uh we got negative one point one seven and negative seven point zero four and one point six five negative six point nine four see what else we got number nine the owners of the circus are planning a new act they want to have a trapeze artist catch another acrobat in midair as the second performer comes into the main tent on a zip line. That sounds like fun. If the path of the trap trap bees can be modeled by the parabola, y equals one fourth x squared plus sixteen, and the path of the zip line can be modeled by y equals two x plus twelve. At what point can the trapeze artist grab the second acrobat? Yeah, that sounds like fun. On new document no. Graph menu three two. So we got y equals two x plus twelve. Two x plus twelve. And where's my equal sign? My equal sign didn't stick, or I didn't touch it anymore. Press enter. There we go. And we'll press tab. And we got y equals. And that's one control divide four. And then it's x squared, x squared uh, plus 16, plus 16. Press enter. I don't see it crossing anywhere, do you? Oh, there it is. There it is. Tangent it looks tangent. All right, so menu six, four. 420. All right, so our solution is 420. You can at the point 420. All right. A parabola opens to the left. Identify an infinite set of parallel, parallel lines that will intersect the parabola only once. That would be uh, Y equals a such that a belongs to the set of real numbers and that's the set consisting of the x-axis and all lines parallel to the x-axis the set consisting of of uh, the x axis and all lines parallel to the x axis. Good job. Number 11. If a parabola can intersect a line from the set of lines x equals a such that a is a set of all real numbers and 0, 1, or 2 points, what do you know about the para parabola? It is a horizontal parabola. If 
a parabola can intersect a line from the set of lines y equals or x equals a. X, okay. How did I know that? Here we go. We got this and this, right? So x equals if x equals that means it is that's going like that. If that if it's going like that, that means the parabola must be opening this way, or perhaps it is opening that way, okay? Which means it's horizontal. Essential question check-in. How can you solve a system of composed, a system composed of a linear equation in two variables and a quadratic equation in two variables? Uh, quickly, either graphically, Or, or algebraically. All right. Good job, folks. See you in class tomorrow, and y'all have a wonderful evening.